Hello everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you guys so much for tuning in as always. So as you all can see by the title of this video, I'm doing something a little bit new on my YouTube channel. So this video is per request by one of my subscribers. So whenever you guys give me suggestions or ideas, I always write them down in my phone. So that is what we are going to do today. So today's topic is all about hair porosity, all right? So really quickly, I'm gonna talk to you all a little bit about what hair porosity is, why it's a big deal, what all of the hoopla is about, and my personal take on it. So make sure that you all stay tuned. So as you all know, I am a pretty big academic and or scholar. And so I did bring my computer as well as some research in regards to what we're gonna be talking about today. It's been a few months, but somebody commented on one of my videos and asked me what my hair porosity is. When they asked me, I was like, heck if I know but anything for my girls here at As Told By Her. So what is hair porosity, all right? So I got it right here for y'all, just so that y'all can follow along. So, so basically, hair porosity refers to your hair's ability to maintain moisture. In short, hair porosity is all about how your hair absorbs moisture. So when we talk about hair porosity, just like our hair texture, it is on a spectrum, right? So we know that with hair textures, you have like, um, you have like 3A, 3B, 3C, so on and so forth, and you know your girl is 4C, right? So the same thing with hair porosity. You have low porosity, medium porosity, and high porosity, all right? And so all of these kind of gauge how well your hair absorbs moisture. So really quickly, I'm gonna go down the line of what each one of those means, right? Low porosity hair, that basically your hair repels moisture, okay? Your hair, hair cuticles are not letting anything in. So then when we talk about medium hair porosity, what that means is that your hair is somewhat in the middle. And then lastly, we have high porosity. So that means that your hair absorbs all of the moisture. However, from my research, high porosity is somewhat of a double-edged sword. Although your hair absorbs all of this moisture, it also loses moisture a lot quicker too. Okay, so in short, I just kind of told you what hair porosity is, what it means, and all of that good stuff. So next I want to talk to you all about how some of this is caused. This is when the water starts to get a little bit murky and why I don't always delve in to blown up topics in the natural hair community just because at the end of the day, I think there's a lot of things that we just don't know and some things don't necessarily matter. But here we go, like I said, this is for y'all. So when we talk about how this is caused, I've read a few different things, okay? So some people are saying that this is genetic, okay? Then others are saying that this is caused by external factors. And so some of those external factors could be chemically enhanced, you know, products in our hair. So, i.e. the creamy crack, so perms, texturizers, or even dirt, or even just heat on your hair. So from blow drying and straightening your hair too much, you could damage your cuticles, right? And so, in terms of how I feel about that, I feel like it's probably a little bit of both. I think about that similarly when we talk about like nurture versus nature. It's a little bit of both, I'm sure. You know, our hair textures for the most part, a lot of times are genetic, right? But then also, we do have some autonomy over how we treat our hair. So I'm sure it's a little but bit. To get into it more specifically in regards to high porosity and low porosity, um, I wanted to talk a little bit more about that. So when we talk about high porosity hair, we're more so discussing how hair cuticles, we're more so discussing how your hair cuticles are more prone to damage, okay? Your hair cuticles are more prone to damage, meaning that there's a lot of breaking and gaps in your hair cuticles that allow moisture to flow through without retention. So this typically leaves hair looking frizzy, more dry and coarse versus when we talk about low porosity hair these hair cuticles lay flat and completely repel water so there's no water getting through okay so with this your hair typically builds up a lot more with product okay okay so now that we know what high low and normal porosity is the next question is what do we do about that so from my research it says that if you have low porosity hair you repel a lot of moisture. You should look for products that have more alkaline ingredients. And so these things are supposed to lift up the cuticles and allow for moisture to get. It. For those people who have high porosity hair, you should look for products that have low pH that help seal your cuticles, such as creams and butters, okay? So that's that, hopefully that was helpful. Somebody asked me what my hair porosity thing is. Again, so here's kind of my beef with these types of things. So as I was doing research over this, my goal was to do the water hair water method, and that's why I have my 
um, glass water container. However, after doing a lot, I saw that a lot of people who are more so into the scientific aspect of hair care, I mentioned that that specific test is not very reliable and that there's a lot of factors that basically go into those hair tests, especially the one with the water, considering oil, um, the temperature of the water, like all of this stuff. Okay, I didn't go through the process of doing that because I wasn't about to wash my hair just to do that. I just, I'm sorry. Just to pull a strand to put it in the water because it can't have no oil or product on it. I would argue that my hair is high porosity so that my hair absorbs water really quickly and water also leaves my hair very, very quickly, leaving it dry. But I think a lot of that is just because of my hair texture. I have read a lot that, that high porosity hair means that your hair is very damaged, but I would somewhat argue to a degree your genetic makeup of your hair because we know that like 4C and coarser hair that, I mean, one, you're born with that a lot of times and that just happens. And so I'm not gonna say that just because my hair is 4C, it's inherently damaged. I don't like that language, but I will say I think my hair is high porosity. I guess my overall takeaway with this video is one that I do hear y'all and I be listening and paying attention and I try to do my research. Um, the second thing being that, again, y'all know I don't always go with the hype of these really big things about natural hair care. Um, if there's nothing else that you get from me, I'm very basic when it comes to my hair regimen and y'all know that, I always have been. I think that if you take care of your hair and you love your hair, it will take care of you and love you in return. I just wanted to come to you all and talk to you about hair porosity because I know some of my subscribers have really been concerned about that. And so I just want to say, I personally don't think it's that big of a deal. I've been natural for six years and I just learned about my hair porosity. And even with that, I don't necessarily see me changing much of my routine. But yeah, so that's my two cents. Thank you for joining me for my first ever hair chat on my channel. If you have any more questions, concerns, or comments, y'all already know what to do. Drop those below, but then also while you're at it, do not forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys really soon. Bye.